The United Nations Security Council expected to take up a resolution demanding an immediate ceasefire in Gaza. That's expected to happen in just about an hour. However, the U.S. says the Biden administration will veto the Arab-backed resolution. Also want to show you this video right here. Let's pop it up on your screen so you can get a look as videos are circulating all over social media showing an apparent retaliatory Israeli airstrike in Lebanon, striking an alleged Hezbollah weapons depot. Want to talk about all of the latest developments, as there are a lot of them, so let's bring in Joe Trusman, the senior research analyst at the Foundation for Defense of Democracy's Long War Journal. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us today. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Of course. Well, first off, I want to start by talking about the strike there over in Lebanon. What do we know about the airstrike itself? What was hit? What information do we have? And what are we still waiting to figure out? Right. So, yeah, uh, the strike in Lebanon, uh, it struck uh, what well, was attacked rather by the Israeli military. At least what the Israeli military is saying is that they struck a weapons depot. All right. Uh, or uh, two weapons depot, at least. So uh, this is uh, that belongs to Hezbollah. Now, the this is only the IDF's version or side of things, okay? So Hezbollah hasn't come out and said, yes, the IDF struck uh, uh, one of our weapons depots. Uh, actually, right now, what's being reported in Lebanon, that it was uh, one of the sites was a cement factory. But looking at the video, I think it was a little more than just a cement factory, okay? You can see secondary explosions in the video. So it's uh, something was definitely hit there of importance. And it was probably what the IDF is saying. So, uh, so right now, it's likely to be uh, a Hezbollah weapons depot that the IDF hit. And, uh, but the interesting part of this actual strike is that it happened north, a lot further north than what we've been seeing in the last few months. Uh, it, it occurred in the Sidona area, uh, which is not actually near the Lebanon-Israel border, which uh, most of the fighting has been happening in the last four months. So that was very interesting. And just to add very quickly, is that the IDF said that they struck this weapons depot because the uh, because Hezbollah launched an explosive-laden drone against uh, Israel, northern Israel earlier that day. And reports are also starting to circulate that Iran warned Hezbollah not to give Israel cause to launch a full-scale war along the Israel-Lebanon border itself. What would be the possible reasoning behind Iran issuing that warning? Right. So we have to go back in the last four months, okay? So at least when it comes to the Lebanon-Israel border, what we've seen, at least what I've observed, is that it's been measured fighting rather that most of it has been confined to the north to this border area now both sides of the israeli military and hezbollah have the capabilities to strike much further a wider area all right hezbollah can has the capability to launch rockets uh into southern israel and, and obviously the idf has the air force they can do the same uh with lebanon but it's been sitting there most of the fighting at the Lebanon border because it, it, both sides, and I'm, and of course this is Iran as well. They don't want the war to uh, the, the conflict to uh, uh, expand. Okay, they don't want it to expand. They don't want to create a, a full fledged war here. Uh, so because uh, there's many considerations on both sides here, so they're keeping it at a low level. And remember. This is very important to note, is that what Hezbollah and to an extent Iran, what they're trying to do here is that they're trying they're trying to save Hamas, all right? That's what they're doing here by tying up the Israeli military in the north. They While they say that they're uh, in support of the Palestinian people, that's not really the truth. It, what's happening is that they're trying to save Hamas by tying up the Israeli military uh, uh, on the Lebanon-Israel border. And I do want to show a shot right now. This is actually over at the Israel-Gaza border. You're looking at it live right there. Now, Reuters actually spoke with the IAEA chief who said that Iran continues to, quote, enrich uranium well beyond the needs for commercial nuclear use. Is that concerning for Israel, the U.S., other countries across the world? Oh, absolutely. Listen, Iran has shown that they're the most prolific state sponsor of terrorism, a nuclear weapon in their hands uh, would be devastating. 
we've seen it in the last four months what they've done, right? Uh, uh, their proxies and their the clients that they they back in the region, whether it's in Gaza, Lebanon, Syria, uh, Yemen, Iraq. Uh, it's uh, it's it's very concerning here. So yeah, and also uh, I think it's um, noteworthy to say as well is that uh, this war can just be a, a distraction, all right, for the U.S. and for Israel and other allied countries, while the while Iran uh, races to a nuclear weapon. Okay, so this report is very concerning and should be taken uh, should not be taken lightly. Rather, so uh, so yeah, it's uh, I, I, I really believe uh that that we have to keep tabs on iran right now uh especially in regards to their their uh potential uh race to a, a nuclear weapon and we talk a lot about hamas we talk about hezbollah how do the two compare to each other the two terror groups there when you're talking about the number of troops so to speak that they have the weapons how do they compare to one another no, this is a very good question. Uh, there is some comparison, but at the end of the day, Hezbollah is a much, much stronger organization. I would go as far as saying that all the Palestinian organizations uh, combined that operate in Gaza or Lebanon or Syria uh, have, can cannot match what cannot match what Hezbollah has in terms of firepower in terms of manpower uh, and other technologies, all right? Uh, we have to remember that a lot of what Hezbollah receives as far as weapons, it's transferred by Iran and its allies. Now, Hamas and other Palestinian organizations, they don't, uh, while they, they do get some uh, of the weapons that they have transferred to them or smuggled to them, uh, most of the, a lot of what they've had to do uh, as far as weapons is they had to learn how to do it, how to create it, because they don't have either uh, the technology or they just can't, obviously can't get uh, weapons uh, uh, sent to them uh, like other Iran-backed organizations. So, uh, so yeah, so there's, uh, you know, they, both organizations, uh, they do have some similarities. They have drones and uh, they have anti-tank guided missiles and other, other weapons. But in the end, Hezbollah is much stronger. And that's where I think a lot of the concern is in the region and with the United States and, of course, Israel, that a war with Hezbollah and Israel can erupt. And that would be much, much more devastating than what we're seeing in Gaza and in Israel right now. And I want to talk a little bit more about Hamas right now, because we heard from Israeli defense minister who did say that uh, Hamas overall, the head leadership, is looking to replace Sinwar, who we've talked about a lot, Gaza's leader there, for Hamas. Why might that be the case? Why would they want to possibly replace him? Right, so there, you can look at this uh, at a few in a few ways. Okay, uh, there have been reports that uh, Yahya Sinwar, the, the chief of, of, of Hamas in Gaza, has been cut off. Essentially, communication with him has been cut off. That may be true. I mean, there is a war, so it's, it's possible, right? So, uh, but but I think also we have to understand that what happened on October seventh uh, may have been is likely a. Hamas is starting to realize that it is that was a huge mistake, okay? And now look what's happening. Hamas's leadership, and actually Hamas's rule in Gaza is threatened. Uh, now we're seeing the Israelis closing in on the southern border, on southern Gaza, especially the city of Rafah. So it's, uh, I, I think what there, there may be some nervousness there, uh, which is a good thing for the Israelis, of course. But uh, so, yeah, so we will see. But uh, right now, as far as Sinwar is concerned, uh, I think he is on the run right now. Uh, and obviously the Israelis are looking for him. Uh, but it's just not, again, it's just not Sinwar. Of course, there's other members of the leadership in Hamas. Uh, like uh, Mohammed Dave, Marwan Issa, uh, uh, Sinwar's brother. So uh, it's not just him, but he is the number one target right now, of course. So uh, I think in the end, Israel will find Sinwar one way or another. But uh, I think Hamas is starting to get nervous, the lead, especially the leadership abroad. They're seeing what's happening in Gaza. They're seeing that Hamas is uh, close to being eliminated or its rule, uh, or at least its rule in Gaza, is uh, coming to an end. So they, they might be looking for 
somebody else to to try to change change the course of the events going on in Gaza. And we've been talking a lot about this, but the United Nations Security Council expected to vote today on an Arab-backed resolution that demands an immediate humanitarian ceasefire in Gaza. But we know the U.S. says that it's going to veto it. So my question for you is why even go ahead with that vote overall? Why would you bring it up and vote on it if the U.S. has already said we are going to veto this? Right. I think they're, uh, they're trying, even though they the U.S. is likely going to veto it. Uh, these Arab states that are backing this resolution, they are trying to uh, demonstrate some type of, uh, we'd say, solidarity, uh, or to show that they are tr at least trying, at least trying to implement a ceasefire, even if it's not going to work. They're trying, but the thing is here, which is important, important to mention, is that a ceasefire in Gaza right now benefits Hamas. End of story. It benefits Hamas right now uh, because, the, again, like I said earlier, their they are their rule is being threatened by Israel, and uh, Israel. I don't think Israel has ever been this close to eliminating Hamas and its allies in the Gaza Strip. Okay, so a ceasefire for Hamas is badly needed right now. Uh, so uh, I, I, I think the U.S. veto is a good thing, uh, but we'll just see how things uh, will play out in the next few weeks and months. Yeah, a lot of possible developments and really just a lot of developments that happen. I say it all the time, but on a daily basis. Joe, thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us and help break all of it down. Anything else you want to add about any of this? I know it's a very broad topic here, but anything you want to add before I let you go? Uh, actually, I think uh, we covered all the topics uh, in, in a good manner here. So again, things like you said, things are changing uh, rapidly, right? So we'll see what happens tomorrow or we'll see what happens that week, next week. So, But it is a pleasure to be here. We'll see what happens about 10 minutes from now. All right. Thank you, Joe. We appreciate you being here with us. Thank you.